morning. How is everybody? Good. Good. Did, did there not everybody here? Yes, sir. Hello. 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 <laughs> hey, man, let's all stand our feet. Uh, I want you to look around this morning. If you see someone that you don't know, introduce yourself to them. Say it's great to see you today in the house of God. I've come to worship and to glorify and magnify the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see you. We'll get started here in just in a few moments. So just get around, give people our flies, our hugs, and shake their hands, love on one another. Amen.
done for me. Does anybody have a reason to praise the Lord today? Well, he's God in the Father. He's God in the Son. He's God in the Holy Ghost. He's God all three and four. And I know God is God. God don't ever change. And I know God is God. And he always can be. to the area. They're from New Mexico. Woo. I didn't know you could get here from New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm 
<laughs> I didn't think that was possible, but it is so great to have the Houston and the Trinco family. And I believe this is mom, mom, dad here. And it's so great to have y'all. Guess where they're from now? Greasy Branch. <laughs> Guess what? Half the people in Swain County don't know where that's at. <laughs> But it's so great. It's so great to have you guys with us today in the house of the Lord. It's so good to have Brother and Sister Harper with us from Jacksonville, Florida, from the Marietta Church of God, Brother Wooten's church. We know him. It's so great to have y'all with us today. It's good to have our friends here. I don't know who you are, but stand and greet the people and tell us who you are today. You and Melanie Harrison from Lakeland, Florida. Hey, man, Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> Anybody else from Lakeland around here? Yeah, we've got some others that's from <laughs> Amen. It's great to have y'all with us today. It's so good to have uh, Anna's father and mother here with us today. So good to see you with us today in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're here today to, number one, to honor the name of Jesus Christ, to give Him praise for all that He has done for us. Because I don't know about anybody else, but I feel blessed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I feel blessed by not what I feel, but what I know. Because if you're going by your feelings today, you may feel like uh, singing the blues. Uh, but if you go on what you know, you know that you're blessed beyond all measure. And so we're here to honor the name of Jesus Christ. And then we're going to honor our seniors today. Uh, we have six from the church that's connected to our church that graduated uh, this past week. Uh, and we're going to honor them here just in a little bit. And uh, But before we get there, there's another uh, young man. Uh, Sister Linda, you need to stand for this. Uh, uh, this is, uh, well, we're, we're going to present Brother Aaron something, but it's also his birthday. Well, I heard you had a birthday. in this church, Amen. part of our ministry. Amen. And uh, I tell you what, this, this young man is amazing. Uh, he went and, and took his exhorted license uh, through the church of God with no books. With no books, and he passed. Amen. And I was like, that is absolutely amazing. Amazing, amazing. So today, we're going to Give him his exhorted certificate. And what this does is Aaron Jake Bridges, his ministerial number, man, eight. My, I was four. What are you, Tim? Two? <laughs> if you're two, Brother Moore's four. <laughs> Three. Uh, uh, is hereby certified as an exhorter in the Church of God with international offices at Cleveland, Tennessee, USA and is therefore authorized to preach and defend the gospel of Jesus Christ and perform any other such ministerial duties as authorized by the International General Assembly of the Church of God. This certification confirmed at the principal office of said Church of God at Cleveland, Tennessee on May the 13th, 2021. Brother, we appreciate you and congratulations. <laughs> Amen. He, he's, he's one of those SMRT people. I mean, yeah. Some of y'all get that a little bit later on. <laughs> Amen. But we're just delighted to be here uh, just to be obedient to the Lord and have His will in our lives. And I know that God's will is going to be done. We're going to do something today, and I know we have several families that's taken vacation leave just as soon as school was out, they hit the door running. But I felt something in my heart, and I believe we're going to do it today. Get your red back candle, and let's come to this choir. Amen. Everybody, the candle wheel, let's come and let's fill this choir up. First time we've had choir since those stinking COVID-19. And I want us to come and I want us to praise and I want us to look to fly the name of Jesus Christ today. Thank you, brother, for coming. Amen. I like your spirit.
Graceable. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is this not right?
million dollar man. Yes. Sister Harper, I tell you, I've been told that you are a wonderful singer. And would you bless us with a song today? I hate to put you on spot, but it's Brother Radford's fault. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. It would be great to have you to sing for us today. Amen. We're, we're so delighted uh, to have Brother and Sister Harper with us. Just a kindred spirit. I love it. And when you just meet somebody, it's just like, yes, I know. Amen. Praise God. She's, she is mad at you, brother. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Lord, Hallelujah. glory. Thank you, Jesus. Good and then when the Lord starts moving and starts smiling and all that, you know, I'm trying to get up here and say, I'm not going to Touch your Jesus. Touch your Jesus.
uh, that have graduated from this church. And we're going to honor them today. But before uh, we honor them, I really feel in my heart uh, that God has given me a word. Uh, many times when we, we honor our seniors, we just uh, give them a card. And they love what's on the inside. Just please don't ignore what's on the inside. You will greatly appreciate it. At least I hope you would. And uh, But as I was preparing uh, for today, and I, I was really uh, challenging myself. I'm like, Marty, don't do that just because your daughter graduated. Uh, but Because uh, uh, this might be an opportunity where I can preach to her. <laughs> and she'll have to listen. Because we're in the house of God. <laughs> no, no, we, we are so blessed uh, with all of our seniors. And I know some of them uh, through the past year, the pandemic and different things. We may have not seen some faces like we have others. But I want to sow into them. Amen. And when we sow into them, uh, we're not saying, this is what we're saying. We believe in you. Amen. We believe in you and we believe that God has great things for your life. Yeah. And I believe that God does have yeah. great things yeah. for every one of these seniors. Of course, we've got one that's got a boyfriend in another church. Oh, no. Yeah. And he's uh, uh, actually a preacher. And, uh, oh, no. Uh, uh, you know, I wonder sometimes. Uh, definitely, definitely, oh, no. Run! If you know what's good for you, run, girl. But uh, we're blessed. We're, we're blessed beyond measure. And uh, But I want to share just a few things, I believe, not just to our seniors, but to all of us. Because the Word of God applies to all. It's Amen. not just a handful, but it applies to us all. If you have your Bibles uh, this morning, if you will, turn with me to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 2. Any time that you get in the book of Proverbs, uh, you can really dig deep uh, because there's wonderful, wonderful life lessons uh, in the book of Proverbs. But as I went to the scripture uh, this past week, it was just like the, the Spirit of the Lord began uh, to speak something into my heart. Uh, but before but before I began today, I want us to ask the seniors... <laughs> Y'all thought y'all were going to stay where Yens was. Uh, Scott, could you scoot over this way and let them come over here and say, just switch a uh, Kaylee, uh, Zachary, and Hannah. I, I see Jackson wasn't able to be here, Madison wasn't, and Curtis wasn't. But you three come up here. Uh, that way I can preach right at you. <laughs> Before I begin ministering today, I want you guys to know that you're not too young. That is a lie that Amen. the devil has used against a lot of young people. Amen. Well, we're, we're too young to be used of God. Well, I'm reminded in the Bible, Joash was seven years old when he began to be the king. Not his much is written about Joash as there is Josiah. Because Josiah, he was eight years old when he began to rule over Israel. The Bible tells us at the age of 16 that he began to seek the Lord. At the age of 20, Josiah began to get the house of God back into order. Amen. So God used him in a mighty way. We find out that Solomon was probably around the age of 12. And when I found that out, I was always thinking that Solomon would have been much older than that, but at the age of 12. We preached a couple of weeks ago about Bezalel, the one that was very that was a, a master with his hands in arts. He was probably 13 years old. He created the masterpieces of the tabernacle. Thirteen years old. The Spirit of God was upon him and he was used mightily. When you find out the ages of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with Daniel, 
They would have probably been between the ages of 11 and 13 when they were brought captive in Babylon. So if these were used mightily of God at a young age, don't any of you say that we're too young. Right. That we cannot be used of God because of our age. And here is another lie that is taught to our kids. Well, they're going to, uh, they're going to experience their freedom. And when they experience their freedom, they're going to explore. And how many has ever heard this little cliche say, well, they're just sowing their wild oats. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes the culture today encourages kids to explore and to find their freedom. And if that is the culture of America today, we need to change the culture because Amen. this is what has been said. Come this on. is what our culture says today. That when you are young, when you find your freedom, when you find uh, where you can explore, where you're, you're, you really become a young adult, you better explore all the avenues of life. Do everything that you can because there's going to come a time in your life where you're going to have to settle down. Because this is what America says. Because if you don't do that and you get married, you'll be 10 years in your marriage and you'll regret not exploring. You will regret not sowing your wild oats, so to speak. And a lot of times we try to excuse our teens and we try to excuse our graduates and says, well, they'll come back around. They'll have to go and find themselves. Well, as a Christian, yeah. and as a minister, I do not recommend that. Amen. As a matter of fact, I believe Scripture is against it. Amen. It's against it. Yeah. You can't just go and find yourself. But the culture today says that. Yeah. The culture today says you are your own person. You've got to be true to yourself. Find who you are. That's the reason we're having these identity Crisis. They're not one trying to figure out if they're male or female. It's because they encourage. They encourage them to explore even different sexuality. They encourage. They say try. You need, you need to find out who you are. And as a church and as a Christian, I believe that God wants to use you now. Amen. God wants you to be a worshiper now. God wants you to be a leader now. Not in the future. Many times when I was growing up in the church, this is what we were always taught. Every time we got up to sing, any time that we ever done anything in the church, we were always told, now this is the church of tomorrow. I understand what is being said. I understand that when you are a teenager, that eventually you will be the church of tomorrow. But actually, you are the church of now. Right. Not Amen. tomorrow, not That's future, right. but you are the church of now. Right. Yeah. 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 I am coming up, and it's hard to believe. I tell people this, and some of you laugh at me. I'm coming up on 30 years of ministry. 30 years of ministry, August the 3rd. In 1991, I accepted the call into the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm only 32. <laughs> Why do y'all always laugh? I just knew that I still looked 32. I know I don't look that age anymore. 33. <laughs> but I remember at a young age, when I was 16 years old, that I began to seek God. Pray for my Lord. life. The Lord. I began to ask the Lord, you know, God, what do you want with Marty Presley? Because I knew there were things that God instilled in me at a very young age because I've been a preacher's kid from the time I was two years old. I was raised in the church. I didn't have a choice. Do I go to church? Do I not? Hannah, you've not had that liberty as well. You've never woke up and said, well, I don't think I'll go to church today because you knew you didn't have that choice. <laughs> and you're a graduate and you still don't have that I choice. <laughs> <laughs> you still don't have that choice. But I decided at, 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 
8 to 16, you know what? I, I'm going to start seeking the face of God and asking His direction for my life. And I, I can remember being used in the house of God. I would get up and our youth choir, we would lead the singing in the church service and the power of God would come down. Hallelujah. I remember shaking under the power of the Holy Ghost from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I knew God was doing something in me. And I'm going to say something right here, right quickly, church. It is so important for us adults and we create an atmosphere right. where our young people yeah. feels like they can have a part of the service. Right. If we don't create an atmosphere as adults, They'll never have a desire to seek a closer and a deeper walk with the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. It was those old timers that used to get out beside themselves. Yeah. They always got a hold of me. Sister Vincent. Never forget her as long as I live. Sister Vincent arthritis had taken over her hands. Arthritis had taken over her feet. And, and as a young teenager, I, I would love to say that I always did what was right. But I did not. I knew I was living in sin. I knew I wasn't where I need to be with God. But when Sister Vincent would get up mm. and start testifying, I would like, please sit down. <laughs> <laughs> because I know you're about to say something yeah. that's going to convict my heart and get a hold of me. Because she'd get up and this is how she'd do it. She'd say, Brother Presley, I've got to say something for the Lord. Yeah, no. And she'd start walking down the aisle about that time the sweet Holy Ghost would get a hold of her. And those arthritic kings, she'd start clapping and she'd look at us like this right here. She said, let me tell you something, young people. If you don't have the fire of God in your life, when the trumpet of God sounds, you'll get no more than two inches off the ground. <laughs> She instilled something in me that caused me to seek a closer walk with God. And at the age of 17, I finally accepted the call into the ministry. Because I'm like, okay, Lord, you've got a purpose, you've got a reason for my life. God began to use me at a very young age. I remember going into my senior year, and uh, I thought, you know, I'm called to preach. Maybe I shouldn't play football. Because I love football. And, uh, you know, there's just something about when you put that helmet on, you put the chin strap on, there's just a nervous person that comes out. <laughs> and uh, there's just something happens when you put that chin strap on and that mouthpiece goes in that mouth. It's just a different person. And I was like, you know, I'm going to quit football because I want to shine the light to my, 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 my fellow peers and stuff. And that was, I really believe with all of my heart, there was an angel that came that night when I ministered for the first time. I really believe it. Everybody at the Whittier Church of God will testify to this, that they really felt like it was an angel that came that night because there was a man that came in the church. Uh, he was a pleasant looking man. He actually looked like a granola from Anaheim. <laughs> Some of you that live around here, you understand what I'm talking about. Amen. And I, I got up and, and I, I had my message together. And I'm like, boy, I've got it together today. I'm going to preach a long time. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Son, I had it together. I said, I'll at least preach 20, 25 minutes, 5 minutes. I was wondering what I was up there. Uh -oh. <laughs> After 5 minutes went by and I had nothing else to say, I thought I'd cry and maybe get people sympathy. So I did. And I just began to snort it out. Oh, God! And I was really torn in between what I was needing to do going into my senior year in high school. And that, that man stood up and he said, let me tell you something, young man. He said, you have found favor with God and you have found favor with people. And God has called you to be a light. He said, you're going to be a light. My very first football game, I'll never forget because I was elected football captain uh, that year and uh, we were playing Mitchell County. Uh, up in Mitchell, and uh, this was during the time when there was a good football team, and they still are today. <laughs> and uh, we were on the field, and uh, this was what I purposed to do. We're going to have prayer, and we're going to have scripture, and that's what we're going to do before every football game. And that's what we did. And that day when we were on the football field, in the middle of the field, the other players started coming out to do the warm-ups. And they seen what I was doing. I had my Bible open. I was sharing the gospel. And they began to laugh at us. They said, you're going to meet God if you're going to meet us tonight. <laughs> Never forget it. And uh, I asked the guys that was there, I said, how many of you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Every one of them raised their hand. I said, let me tell you something, I know better. 
I said, I know better. I know, I know you're not who you need to be or, or what you need to do with the Lord. And uh, there was some of them, there was three guys that came and gave the heart and life to the Lord that yeah. night. Coach Deeks got a hold of me before we went back to the locker room and he said, son, you need to get your mind on the game. <laughs> well, it was the least thing from my mind because we were crying and we were snotting because three guys had given their hearts Amen. to the Lord. Amen. And, well, of course, we beat them that night. <laughs> uh, evidently, the Lord was on my side. Amen. <laughs> But God used me at a young age. So don't allow the devil to lie to you and say, well, that's in the future. You know, that's after I find myself. That's after I, I, I go to college or I start working and, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to get money. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Let me tell you something. In Proverbs chapter 2, he explains to us not only to sons and daughters, but it explains to all of us what we truly need to be doing. Because in Proverbs chapter 2, and starting at verse 1 through verses 15, the Bible says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. I, I remember growing up, uh, my dad would sit down and have talks with me. And I, I used to think about how my dad didn't know nothing. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Sure. Amen. And he would sit down and he would try his best to give me instruction. And here I am, sitting there listening to Daddy, but had this little song in one ear and out the other. <laughs> but if I would have listened more Amen. to what I was instructed Amen. to do. Amen. My life may have been a little bit different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is what he says, if thou wilt receive my word. Right. So listen, guys, today you have a choice. You can say in one ear and out the other. You can say, preacher, you don't understand. I'm a young adult now. I can do what I want to. Uh, I hope you don't have that attitude because if you do, you'll fall real quick. Right. But you've got to learn to listen to instruction. And when you listen to what God says, right. your life's going to be better for you. I don't care if some people say, well, man, I can't wait till I can party. I can't wait till I can do this and I can't wait till I do that. Most of the time, people that do that and come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior at a later time always hoped yeah. that they would have never done that. Yes. That they would have never yes. been here. They would have never done that. Amen. And they would have had a better testimony of their life. Right. But in, in, in chapter, in verse 2, it says, So that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. These 12, 13 years you guys have been in school, you've, you've, be, you've got a lot of knowledge, you've got a lot of understanding, but knowledge is not fit for nothing if you don't have the wisdom Right. To use what you learn. Right, amen. Right. Amen. He says, Yea, if thou Christ after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her, talking about knowledge as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of the mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Now, like verse 7. He says, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. And I, I'm just going to ask you, are you righteous? Bless him, Lord. Are you righteous? Does Jesus Christ, is He Lord? Is He Savior of your life? Have you put on the righteousness of Jesus Christ? And if you're righteous, He says, listen here, I'm going to give you sound wisdom. And see, the wisdom of the world today, I'm sorry, Amen. is corrupt. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The wisdom that the world produces today is a lot of times is corrupt wisdom. But God says here, He says, listen, because you're righteous, He said, I will give you sound wisdom. He said, He is a butler to them that walk uprightly. Let me tell you something. The greatest thing that you can have in your life is for God to be your butler. Because with God being your butler, it means that He is your shield and He is your protector. Praise God. Does anybody not need the protection 
or the shield of God in your life, I will be the first one to tell it. I want God's protection Amen. in my life. He says, He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of His saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. This verse 11 is, if you don't listen to another word that I say, this verse 11 is so important. What God is saying, if you will get wisdom and understanding from Him, He'll be your buckler, He'll be your protector, He'll be your shield, He'll give you sound wisdom, and this is what you will be able to do when you allow God to do that for you. Because He said discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. Discretion. In other words, if you allow God to give you wisdom and understanding, you're going to be able to decide right. yes. which right. way to go. Right. Because He'll give you the ability to make the right choices. Right. Amen. And that's so important. That's so important for all of us here today is to have discretion it shall preserve you. In other words, if you make the right choices, He's going to keep you. Yeah. Amen. He says, To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things, who lead the paths of unrights, uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked, and they forward in their paths. In other words, there's going to be people that's going to come in your life it's going to try to trip you up. Yeah. And Satan is very good at sending those friends yeah. or even relationships with boys and girls that can literally trip you up. That's right. You don't have no business dating someone that's not a Christian. Amen. 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 Come on. Praise God. Amen. I will tell you what I was told growing up. You take the Bible with you and you put it in between you, <laughs> girls especially. And said, listen here, before you get to me or touch me, you've got to go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Ah, that's good preaching anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I think we need to start teaching our kids about seven, eight years old. Now, girls, you take your Bible with you on your date. You put it in between you and your boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah, you can hold hands. That's all right. You can get it either. You can even get a peck on the cheek. <laughs> But you're not going, oh, well, glory to God, I'm meddling now. That's okay. When I used to preach at a youth camp down in Florida, uh, I had some of the counselors come up to me one time and they said, man, you're brutally honest. I said, that's the only way they know how to get it. Don't beat around the bush. you just got to be brutal. And you've got to be honest. But I really believe that uh, in, in your life, all of our lives, not, not just in these that are graduating, but all of us, they are, there's people that are sent to us for our destruction. Yeah. Uh -huh. And to cause us to not make good choices and go the way of the world that will trip you up because their ways are perverse Blame. and their ways are not upright and their ways are not holy. Any of your uh, uh, friendships, any of your relationships that are not holy, they will eventually, they will sway you to make bad choices and do the wrong thing. They will. So you keep your relationships holy and you keep your relationships righteous. Amen. In Psalms 121, Psalms 121, I want us to read this. It goes right along with the scripture that I read to you today. Psalm 121, uh, reading verses 1 through verses 8. It says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, I love this, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. Yes. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Right quickly, 
Turn with me to 1 Timothy, or look on the screen, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. I know in just the few minutes that I've had with you guys this morning, you've probably not heard anything that you've not heard me say before. These three right here, I've been their pastor for 15 years. Amen. 15 years. Kaylee? Kaylee Love. I've seen you have some hard times. Tough times. You've went through things that a young child shouldn't have had to go through. Losing your daddy at a very young age. But guess what? You've made it. Amen. Praise God. And you know, today you can say, you know, God's kept me. God's, God's truly preserved me for such a time as this. Now, Hannah, of course, I'm not going to go talking to you. Because these people know how bad I am when I talk about you. I'll lose it, so I'm going to keep it together. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Zachary, young man, I've seen you <laughs> trying to bust buckets open and bust your head open. I've seen you through the thing, but this is one thing, Zachary, I'll never forget and it was just one service and I'm not saying that you you haven't done it ever since then but there was one particular service and I believe you'll remember it happened right over there in the youth center we were having a special service and I'll never forget as long as I live the presence of God came upon me with tears streaming down your face, with your hands outstretched toward heaven, you began to sing that song with all your soul, heart, and mind. Zach, you've got a big future in front of you. Hallelujah. A big future. This young man right here can weld probably better than most professional. Well, we might as well call you professional because that's what you're doing. I mean, the trade that you have chosen uh, to... Thank God for fixing my owning. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I was fixing the owning on my camper, and uh, it's a it's electric owning. Well, I, I thought if it's electric, surely the other side's not spring loaded because oh. I was replacing the owner. Well, needless to say, the other end is spring loaded. <laughs> And I took that thing off. Thank God there was no one around because it would have killed somebody. Oh. Uh, because it broke the owning part. And it was 170 bucks to buy another one. Everybody knows how cheap I am. So uh, I said, Zachary, can you fix this? And he fixed it perfect. And I appreciate that. But your future is great. Amen. Hannah, of course, baby, I'm not going there. <laughs> and, and, and some of these others that, uh, if you were at the graduation yesterday, uh, the three of the others that are not here today, Madison Dixon was the Valley Victoria. And if you would have heard her address to the people, I was totally blown away. And I sat there like a peacock said, I had a little bit to do with that. Because that she's also been a part of the church's life for many, many years. And then Curtis James, purple hair Curtis. Maybe pink, maybe blue, we just don't know. But to overcome what that young man has overcome, given his situation, is absolutely amazing that God was with him and he was able to graduate. Then of course Jackson Jenkins will not hold against him who his daddy is. <laughs> who is his daddy? <laughs> Jack, who, <laughs> who is his daddy? <laughs> but, but Jeff, you know, Jackson, since you guys have been coming here, he's a he's a uh, important part in our youth and we appreciate him from the bottom of our hearts as well. He couldn't be here this morning, but he said he might be able to be here tonight. And uh, wherever, whenever we can get these cards to these kids, we will. But this last scripture really, really does something for me. 
And uh, because we, we know that Paul was really, Timothy was, I honestly believe Timothy was his favorite. Yeah. Even though Paul had other people that was under his ministry, but I, I believe Timothy was just the apple of Paul's eye. And, and he was given instruction to, to Timothy about, you know, don't forget the prophecies that's been given about your life. And, you know, uh, Kaylee, I, I don't know your future. Uh, we'll not let Daniel listen to this, so cut it off if you listen to anything else. I, I don't know your future with Daniel, but if God's will in your life, I pray God's blessings upon you. But in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, Let no man despise thy youth. In other words, what Paul was talking to Timothy, he said, don't, don't let anybody be against you because you are That's right. a youth. That's right. right. Don't, 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 don't you let anybody speak against you because you're youth. Don't let anybody say because you're young, you can't do anything. This is what Paul was saying. But then he instructs Timothy to do something. He says, but be thou an example of the believers. Right. So my charge to you three is, listen here, we're not despising your youth because you're young. We're not saying that God can't use you. But this one thing that I am saying is God, He wants you to be an example to the believers. Amen. Right. Not only are you supposed to be looking up to everybody else as examples, but people should be able to look to you as an example of righteousness and purity and holiness. He says, but be an example of the believers, he said, in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So God wants to use you now. Not in the future. Yes, He wants to use you in the future, but God wants to use you now. Amen. And as I've watched y'all grow up, and, and <laughs> I think it's a... One of the great things that, that of staying at a church for a length of time, you start marrying the babies. I, I've married the babies. Now I'm dedicating their babies. That's awesome. I, I love doing that. And if the future uh, holds for me to stay here and, and one day these guys get married, I look forward to marrying them and, and dedicating their children if the Lord will. But I want God's blessings upon you. I, I don't want y'all to listen to any lie right. of your friends. Come on. Because, Zachary, I know, buddy, that they want to trip you up. Right. Yeah. I know that 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 uh, that first feeling of, of freedom where, where you say, you know what? I mean, this young lady right there, she's got her own place. <laughs> she's gonna stay all night like not by herself, but Hannah went and stayed with her. <laughs> <laughs> but but be careful. Right. Yes. Because you're 18, you're considered an adult. Don't take your freedom for granted and says, you know what, I'll just do. I don't have to listen to mom and dad anymore. If you want to be wise, if you want to have knowledge, and you want your way to be kept straight, you might want to listen. Hannah. <laughs> Well, mama's not here. <laughs> but but this morning as we, we, we close in the service and if we can show these pictures on, on the screen and uh, we've got these little cards. What did I do with them? I can't cash them without y'all signature. No. There's Zachariah. That's Madison. I mean, this young lady right here, her grade was 4.5, the highest one in school. She she is literally a genius. Jackson, bless his heart, looks like his daddy a little bit. <laughs> of course, Kaylee Love. Now, now, where's Fred at? There's my baby. She looks just like me. Uh, show me Curtis again. There's Curtis. I've called him Fred ever since I've known him. <laughs> Guys, come up here. Zachary, Miss Kaylee, 
Hannah. <laughs> I, want, I want every minister that's here, I want you to come up here with me. Every minister that's here in the church. This is my prayer for y'all. Come on up here. Yeah, y'all get in the center. But turn around and look at me. There you go. There you go. I want God to keep you, to preserve you. To fill y'all with the Holy Ghost from the top of your head to the soul of Because I know y'all know what the Holy Ghost is. Thank God some of you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Matter of fact, thank all three of you are. Thank God for it. But you know, when I when I look at you guys and, and I see all these naysayers about the future of the church, I see a good future. I see a great future. I see an anointed future. But we're going to lay hands on y'all today. And we're going to pray that y'all will learn to listen better. <laughs> Just kidding. But but take counsel. Listen to people that, you know, I, I, I know. <laughs> There's a lot of people that love y'all. A lot of people that love y'all. This church loves you. And these ministers love you. And we're going to pray for you not only today, but we're going to pray for you every day of your life. God will use you in a mighty way for His kingdom. You know, Zachary, it's wonderful uh, what you're going to be doing because people need things well done. Exactly. And God can use your talent in that as, as just as well as He can anything else. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. You know, everything in your life, use it for His glory and for His namesake. And you'll be used mightily in the kingdom of God. Remember this one scripture that I memorized when I was 17 years old. Y'all know what it is, Micah 7 and 8. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Thank God for that scripture because it held me up many times. Now, church family, I want you to stand to your feet all over the church. And I want you to stretch forth your hands this way as we pray, as we anoint these, and we're going to believe God is going to use them in a mighty way. Would you help us pray today? Dear Father, as I anoint Zachary, God, I pray that you would bring clarity to every decision that he makes. God, I pray that you will go before him. Before he ever takes any step, God, you will make the way clear. Because, God, we seek you today and we're asking that your will be done in his heart and in his life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, Lord, I anoint Sister Kayla. I thank you, God, for everything that you have brought her through. What could have destroyed, my God, you've made her better. Lord, she didn't get bitter, but God, you made her better. Lord, she is stronger today because of what she's had to go through. And I thank you, God, that your grace has always been there and you're going to continue to be with her. God, use her mightily in the kingdom of God. Help her to reach out and touch those that are hurting and those that are beaten down. God, help her to be an encouragement and God, help her to be a strength. And Lord, we pray that you would guide her footsteps in every way in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for my baby. God, I'm asking for an anointing. God, I ask for a direction in her life, God. Lord, I know that she is used to you and I know that your anointing is upon her. God, you serve in the kingdom of God, not as I want, not as her mom wants, but God, as you see. God, I pray that you would remove anything, God, in this priest's life, that God, that will distract them, but God, keep their eyes upon you. And Lord, we'll never fail to thank you and to praise you and to glorify you in Jesus' lovely name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. And uh, 
I tell you what, guys, we love you. Pray God's best for you. And uh, just continue to lean upon God. It's the best thing I can tell you to do. Lean on God. Listen to good sound advice. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love you, church family. And uh, guess who's going to be with us tonight? My daddy. My daddy is going to preach for us tonight. He's not been able to. And uh, this past year, uh, of course, with mama's diagnosis and different things that they've had to go through. But I said, Daddy, you think you can preach? He said, absolutely, absolutely. son. I'll preach for you. Uh, so come back tonight. And uh, not not just to, to have a good crowd, but to, to come and just support my dad. He, I tell you, it's been a rough time for my mom and dad. And I believe we're going to have a great time in the house of the Lord tonight. So be sure to be here at 6 o'clock, ready to worship and glorify God. Visitors, uh, I tell you what, you've just been a blessing to our church today. And I pray God's blessings upon you. And uh, anytime you're in the area, we hope you can come back. Uh, of course, Sister Harper, every time you come back, we want you to sing. And uh, we appreciate that from the bottom of our hearts. Amen. Brother Dale, would you dismiss us in a word for you? Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you for another day. Your blessings, your mercy, Lord. We thank you for these young people here that we're honored today, God. Most of all, we honor you. God, you've had your blessing on. Lord, you've had your hand on. God, you continue, Lord. When one door is open, God, we pray another door will be open. Let them be a light to others, God. Let them all be an influence always and not be a follower of this life, God. Amen. Just bless this day in a special way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.